The topic I have chosen to speak to you today about is probably one of the most important topics that a Muslim needs to be reminded of on a, on a regular basis. You and I know that the Jumu'ah talk is there in order to guide us, to give us the dose of spirituality for the rest of the week that we need to ponder over. And this is why it is incumbent upon every Muslim male to attend the Jumu'ah. And the message should get to the females as well. Because how much new Islamic knowledge do I get every week is a question that I need to ask, you need to ask, and every Muslim needs to ask himself or herself. Mostly the answer is, well, I get five minutes of new Islamic knowledge. Sometimes two minutes of new Islamic knowledge, something that I haven't heard, something that I did not know, something that I maybe knew but forgot about. So we need to realize and understand that it's my duty and yours to make sure we are reminded about things on a regular basis, what is right and wrong, and we learn new information on a regular basis. This is our duty. If we cannot give that to this religion of ours, then it would be questionable to even call ourselves Muslims. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us genuine Muslims. So the, the khutbah is normally delivered in the Arabic language. A lot of people think that, oh, that's my duty. I must just attend the khutbah in the Arabic language and I don't need to come to the masjid for the English talk. The reality is, if you do not understand that message in the Arabic language, then normally the Imams happen to make a very short khutbah because nobody seems to understand it. What's the point of an Imam lengthening the Arabic so long, giving people a solid powerful message when they're just looking at him and they're just enjoying the tune of what he's saying without actually knowing exactly what the message is. So that would make it our duty to come back or to come earlier in order to listen to the English message. And we need to know what is happening. Really, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who understand. Myself and yourselves, we have a certain level of spirituality. That level of spirituality is governed by those around us. To be honest with you, the type of people we have been put into the company of by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning the parents we have, the family members we have, determine to a great degree what type of people we will be. But more than that, the type of people we choose to be in the company of play a very, very great role, or should I say plays a big role. And those are the friends we have. What does Islam say about the type of friends we have? Do you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns us in the Quran very, very clearly in many places regarding the type of friends we have? Let's go through some of these verses. One, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses all of us and he says, Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu attaqu allaha wa kunu ma'a al-sadiqeen. O you who believe, be conscious of your creator and only find yourselves in the company of those who are truthful. Subhanallah. Only find yourselves in the company of those who are truthful. There is a liar, distance yourself from him unless you can help him to stop lying. And today, sadly, many people take lies for granted. When the hadith says, Al -mu la a true mu'min does not lie. Nothing will make a mu'min lie. Some weakness might make him commit other sins. But for lies, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says it's a no-go area. If a person could lie and cheat one, he can lie and cheat everyone else. And generally, when you have a person who is lying, to fellow human beings, there would be something wrong with their own salah. Why do we say that? Because Allah says when you read salah properly, looking forward to every salah, not just reading it out of force and feeling the burden of going to the masjid or feeling the burden of reading a five salah a day. No, you look forward to it. You keep yourself in wudu. You come 
you are restless if the time of salah has entered and you have not yet read your salah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us the importance of salah in so many verses of the Quran. Do you know that Allah says, Inna salata tanha anil fahshai wal munkar. Indeed, salah itself has the capability and capacity of protecting you from immorality and evil. And definitely lies is a very big evil. May Allah protect us. So if a person is involved in lies, that means there is something wrong with their salah because the salah did not protect them from lying. And what would that mean? They are cutting corners. Probably when the sujood is done, before they get into the condition of sujood, they're already up. Before they get into the position of ruku', they already find themselves halfway down to sajda. Why don't we read the tasbih? that is meant to be read in ruku' properly for the sake of Allah. Think what we are doing. We are putting our head right on the ground from a standing position, going right down to a prostrating position. Would we do that for anyone besides the one who created us? No, we wouldn't. Never. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to put our heads down on the ground for him alone. So Allah says, when you do that, you are conscious of the answerability to Allah. When you know that you are answerable to Allah, would you lie? You wouldn't lie because people might believe you, but Allah knows that that is a lie. So you would have to answer him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. So a person who lies has lost the consciousness of their creator. May Allah forgive myself and yourselves wherever we have erred. And may he grant us the chance and opportunity to come back to him quickly before it is too late. So to remain in the company of a person who lies is already unacceptable. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about the day of Qiyamah. On the day of Qiyamah, there will be people who will come and say, and Allah, Allah makes mention of them in Surah Al-Furqan. Ya waylata laytani lam attakhid fulanan khalila Laqad adallani ani al-dhikri ba'da idh jaani Wa kana al-shaytanu lil-insani khadula Allah says on the day of Qiyamah there will be people who will be biting their whole hands out of regret biting their hands out of regret, trying to shove their hands into their mouths, not knowing what type of an answer to give Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they will say, oh, curse upon myself. What did I do? Why didn't I choose the messenger as a friend? Why didn't I choose the pious as a friend? Why didn't I choose the path of the messenger through the pious people who are around me, the good company around me, Ya Allah? Why did I take such and such a person as a friend? He deviated me after I was shown the right path. Many of us know that Salah is valid. Salah is to be read. Salah is five times a day. But because the people we are with don't even bother reading Salah, we find ourselves the time of Dhor comes, we didn't even realize. The time of Asr comes, we don't even know. Maghrib comes, we don't even realize. Why? Because the people around us are not reading it, we would not read it. But believe me, if you find yourself in the company of a person who's conscious of their Salah, the minute Dhor comes, even if you're feeling lazy, five of them are making wudu to say we're reading Salah, you have no option but to read Salah. Allahu Akbar. That's the power of company. If you go to Johannesburg, I can tell you the power of company. You find, for example, mountains which look yellowish gold, but it's sand. Why? Because there was gold there at one stage. There was gold there at one stage. For sand, which is worthless, to be in the company or right next to the gold, it converted it into a color that to everyone it appears gold. Subhanallah. Just imagine. For sand it can happen. So if you stay in the company of someone, if you stay in the company of someone and you make sure that your friends are those who are good, who have a good scent. When I say good scent, I'm not talking of Hugo Boss and all those smells. No, we are talking about a spiritual flavor. 
to the life of an individual. They are truthful, they are honest, they are free from drugs, free from alcohol. Inshallah, you will find yourself naturally, you will find yourself very uncomfortable even when you want to light a cigarette. Because none of them smoke. That is the power of company. Subhanallah. So every one of us needs to know that those who have the biggest role in your life and in mine are those whom you choose to be your friends. Be careful whom you allow to be your friend. A person is known by the friends he or she keeps. So every one of you must be careful whom you befriend. Let me tell you why, subhanallah. When marriage bells are ringing and people are looking for a spouse, do you know how do you tell that this person is genuine? It's easy for a young man or a young woman to come for one or two meetings when we are meeting to say, I am presenting the best that I can. Would anyone present anything but the best? No, they wouldn't. They want to marry. So they've got their smiles. They're speaking quietly. They're telling you this. They're telling you I'm a good person. And you know my family and my this and my that and so on. That is not how you would know them completely. You might have a slight picture of it. But you will never be 100% sure. Unless and until you look at their friends. If you look at the friends of a person, subhanallah, automatically, you already know that person. The hadith tells you, يُعْرَفُ الْمَرْءُ بِخَلِيلِهِ Or at least it is the saying of the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. A person is known by the company they keep. So if you want to know someone, you want to deal with them with business, look at the type of business people they associate with. It will tell you in a nutshell how their thinking is. Let me explain to you why we say this. When we see the ocean, and mashallah, here in Cape Town, we have the ocean right next to us. When we see fish, if you find a certain type of fish, do you not find all of the same type swimming together, moving together? You would never find one whale and then a dolphin next to it and a small fish next to that one and another king clip and a hake and, and this and that. I'm using names from Ocean Basket, subhanallah. But the reality is, we see that all the fish that have something in common move together. Which means when you see an individual moving with another group of people, you should know that they have something in common that makes them go together. If a person has nothing in common with you, they'll come with you once, twice, three times. Then they will get fed up. And after that, they will leave you or they will take a step backwards and people will know something went wrong here. Why? They tried, but they were different people. Subhanallah. Now let me explain to you, when you have company, you are making yourself or destroying yourself. So when you are seen with all drug addicts, for example, and then you claim that you're not on drugs, there are two scenarios. You are either telling the truth but you will have the effect of it very soon or you are lying people are watching you they know this man can turn green in the face to explain to us that he's not on drugs but all his friends are on drugs it's impossible for us to buy his story may allah protect us so you are affecting yourself negatively because if you are truthful people won't believe you and this is why we say when a person wants to give up his bad habits, the first thing he needs to do, sacrifice your friends, change them completely. Allahu Akbar. Even if it's very hard and very difficult, you will have to do that in order to become a better person. When you have people whom you deal with and they have shady deals, if you would like to start dealing straight, you need to sacrifice them either in a good way or you need to just say goodbye and carry on. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the power to do that. So let's never fool ourselves. I want to give you another example. Who is a Sahabi? A Sahabi, may Allah be pleased upon all of them, is one who has met the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam in his lifetime and died as a Muslim. Do you know what they are called? Do you ever find any hadith or any Quranic verse that just says, no, Abu Bakr 
and Umar and Uthman and Ali radiallahu anhum and the others, they are just friends of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There's nothing that says that. What it says, it uses the term Sahabi. Sahabi meaning a companion. There is a very big difference. A companion. It shows that the company is what is of vital importance. The company. By being in the company of a solid spiritual mentor, automatically they were known as the best people. The best of people, my generation, and then the next, and then the next. It is reported that any individual who saw the Prophet وسلم, got guidance immediately, without exception, besides those who looked at him with the wrong eyes. Anyone who looked at the Prophet وسلم, just to look at him, they got guidance from Allah. On condition that they were in search of guidance. That's the condition. And they were sincere and genuine. Because Abu Lahab and Abu Jahl also looked at the Prophet وسلم, but they hated him. Why? They were jealous of him. They wanted the power. They wanted the glory. They wanted the clout. They wanted the wealth. They wanted the women. So they accused him of wanting the same. Yet he did not want no power, no money, no women, no nothing, no clout. He wanted i'la'u kalimatillah. He wanted to spread the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is the truth. Those who knew the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and looked at him with genuine eyes, immediately they accepted Islam. Or within some time they accepted Islam. They were known as Sahaba. That's why الصحابة كلهم عدول أهل السنة والجماعة We believe that all the Sahaba are sitting on a high pedestal. We will never speak ill and bad even about one of them. No matter what might have happened between them sometimes and the stories come to us, we are nobodies to even comment about them because both parties were far better than us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect our tongues. Those are the Sahaba, radiallahu anhum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose them. Now if we take a look at Abdullah ibn Salam, radiallahu anhu, he was a Jewish priest, a Jewish rabbi. When he saw the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, do you know what he said? He says later on, he says, Wallahi, when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came to Madinatul Munawwara, and everyone was trying to look at him and watch him and see him and so on. And I happened to look at his face. I had a glance at his face from the crowd. As soon as I saw him, I knew this is not the face of a liar. Subhanallah. Why? Because he looked at him with the right intention, with the correct intention. Whenever an alim or a scholar of deen is standing in front of you, you need to have the right intention. The ulama are not prophets. They will have their own weaknesses. They will have their different quirks. Sometimes more, sometimes less. But the message they are delivering to you is an amana from Allah. You've got to look at the message. Is it a solid message? Is it correct? If it is correct, no matter who is telling it to you, you need to take heed. Even if a non-Muslim is telling you that brother, don't lie. You need, you don't look at the fact that he's a non-Muslim and say, this is a non-Muslim telling me something. So, you know, throw him aside. He's telling you don't lie. So he is telling you something that you need, which is valid, which is correct, which does not negate anything that is in the Quran and Sunnah. In fact, it promotes what is in the Quran and Hadith. You will take it. Even when a child comes to those who are elderly and tells them, you know what? Oh, my father, you are wrong. You need to take heed. Ibrahim alayhi salatu wassalam went to his father and says, Ya abati inni qad jaani min al-ilmi ma'alam ya'tik fattabi'ni ahdika siratan sawiyya. Oh my father, knowledge has come to me that did not come to you. So follow me. And I will show you what the right path is. 
Imagine a child is telling the father, some of us have the same within our own homes, our daughters, our sons might come to us and say, dad, mom, you know what? What you're doing is wrong. Don't do this. Take it as a blessing. Consider yourself in a similar position like the father of Ibrahim alayhi salam. He reacted in a wrong way. Do you want to choose that reaction or do you want to react properly? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us that reaction. So getting back to the issue of companionship, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam not only expressed the fact that there is virtue for anyone who was in his company, but he says even anyone who was in their company is now known as a tabi'i. Subhanallah, may Allah be pleased with them. Tabi'i meaning someone who met any one of the Sahaba radiallahu anhum in their lives and they died as Muslims. They are known as tabi'in. It's amazing. Allahu Akbar. And here we are. We are sitting in our societies, in our environments. You do not necessarily have to befriend your neighbor to the degree that you allow them to have an impact on you. If every day you hear loud music from your neighbors, you don't need to start playing loud music as well. You need to know where it is and you need to know the level of it and you need to know where to draw the line. They are your neighbors, you will fulfill their rights as neighbors. If they are Muslims, they have a double right. If they are relatives, they have a triple right. And at the same time, if they are non-Muslims, the bare minimum is they have the right of the fact that they are your neighbors. But we need to realize when you don't know where to draw the line, you will drop with them. The same applies to all your friends. May Allah protect me before everybody else and then all of us inshallah. So if anyone thinks that no, my friends don't really play a big role, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, if you want to know a man, just look at his friends, don't look at him. Subhanallah. Because nothing will bring you close to someone else unless you've got things in common. Find out what is in common. Is it knowledge? Is it womanizing? Is it the nightclub? Is it homosexuality? May Allah protect all our children and us as well. What is it that brings them together? A hidden factor? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant me understanding. And yourselves as well. So today's topic, as you know, in Islam, we are not encouraged to give very, very long talks. Why? Because in Islam, we believe khayrul kalami ma qalla wa dalla. Ma qalla wa kafa khayrum mimma kathura wa alha. The best of speech is that which is short and to the point. That which is short and concise and points directly is better than that which is long and it just takes you around in circles. So the Jumu'ah, the idea of this Friday is to go back with a solid message to look at it, to think about it throughout the week, to effect it in your life. And today's message is regarding friendship. I need to look into who my friends are. And every single one of us, no matter how old you are or how young you are, ask yourself, who are my friends? Why are they my friends? What habits have I got from them? Did I start swearing? Did I start shouting and screaming? Sometimes a person is a very nice person. After they get into the companionship of someone else, they become loud mouth. They start swearing and, and shouting. Subhanallah. Sometimes that person whom they are in the company of is imposed on them because it's a parent or a spouse or a child. And sometimes it is a friend. So at least where you have the say, you need to realize that don't allow friendship to overtake your good habits and make them bad. Never. And now, after many years, you might feel it very difficult to change your friends. So what you need to do is stand up and correct them in a nice way. A true friend is the one who corrects you. Do you know when you have a business problem, what difficulty we are facing on the globe today is that when you call in a third party to try and resolve your matter, mostly that third party might be inclined to one of the two already. So if he's more friendly to you, for example, he will take your side. So we'll actually tell them, look, I've got a problem with this brother. Please come and let's sort it out. So you go in sorting it out for him, not for justice. That's not a friend. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his companions, whenever there was a problem, even if there were non-Muslims on the other side, if they were right, they were right. So whether it is your brother or your father or whoever it is on one side, if they are wrong, they are wrong no matter how close they are to you and how much wealth they have. 
يا ايها الذين امنوا كونوا قوامين بالقسط شهداء لله ولو على انفسكم او الوالدين والاقربين او يو هو بيليف stand firm for justice even if it is against your own self or your parents or your relatives stand firm for justice that is what makes a good friend so a friend is not a person who tells you what you want to hear not always a friend is one who supports you comforts you and corrects you where you are going wrong that is a true friend and someone who's given you wrong advice is an enemy of yours even if they are with you 24 hours of the day a person who tells you listen brother stop smoking i am fed up of this i am not going to sit with you again wallahi that's a good friend keep in that company because at one point inshallah you will realize that smoking is bad we all know it's bad and everyone is trying to give it up but the bare minimums when people get worse habits than smoking lying cheating deceiving may allah protect us it has become the norm to deceive people in fact a clever businessman now in some circles is one who can cheat in a very cunning way that he becomes a better businessman they say this guy is a top businessman in certain circles that would be referring to the biggest thug may allah protect us i hope it's not the case in our communities but in certain circles i've been coming now i've traveled a few countries and I have seen things that have really taught me a lot. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all lesson. May he make us the best of people. So the reality is, I think it's time we took stock of who our friends are. And I hope and I pray that this short talk of mine could actually help myself and yourselves consider and could give us points to ponder over, to think about. And I'd like to end off with one note. And that is that, you know, in the home, Sometimes with us and our qualities, we brush them off or on to our wives and our offspring without even realizing. And the same applies with the wives. And sometimes it even happens with brothers and sisters and so on. Where you have a person, when they got married, they were very good, quiet, from a good home, decent place. But they got married and every day they had to hear swear words and shouting and deceiving and so on. So now suddenly, five years down the line, they have been transformed to a worse person and they find themselves swearing and shouting then they sit back and they say but i wasn't like this i don't know how this came he made me like this and you sit back and you say how could i have made you like that don't come and con the world but the reality is the way we live sometimes we force our spouses and our children to develop the same bad habits wallahi let's be careful because we are living with them we need to understand it. Let's be exemplary Muslims. Come on. We've got such a beautiful deen, such an exemplary religion. Why is it that we have such a bad name on the globe? Is it because we are the rotten ambassadors of the deen? Surely we can do something to correct that. We don't want the Prophet wasallam to, to be embarrassed of us on the day of Qiyamah. That are these the type of people who actually claimed to follow me? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the true love of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka